And when China sent such an important figure, you know, to be the delegate, uh, that was a sure sign that the market was going to respond positively this morning. But as you saw, as you mentioned earlier, uh, we lost a lot of steam right at 150 today when the news broke about Trump, you know, talking about national security. So uh, it's not a coincidence. The market. Why is that? Just the market, feeling that we're going to go on a longer shutdown. We're in day uh, 17. You know, potentially now? we'll see how argumentative this becomes, and that's been one of the major sticking points. So uh, the market does not want to see that right now. We want to focus on the positives right now. We've seen the market. Have a 900 point move in the last two trading days. Why is that? It's because of optimism in China. Matt, previously traders like yourself used to say, oh, shutdowns don't matter so much. Are we starting to think that this one does? Uh, I mean, the market hasn't reacted as such. You know, I mean, I think the longer it goes, the, the more it's going to hurt the, the economy, uh, the American, the psyche of the American public. Uh, but I don't think the market itself is really looking at a shutdown, at least from the trading aspect of it. Paul, are you surprised uh, to see the, the rebound we had on Friday and today, or do you think the S&P 500 is undervalued now? I think it's definitely undervalued. I mean, if you look at its kind of... Uh, long-term forward PEs and you can't look at trailing uh, PEs anymore because they don't they don't re, they only reflect three quarters of the tax cut um, we're at uh, about 14.1 uh, forward PE on the S&P 500 the historical average is about 14.6 14.7 so this market is really undervalued so what are you guys doing at Fairfax well we're looking at at uh, trying to look at the best stocks uh, and buying them now uh, at, at low valuations. I mean, Apple, is at, as of Friday, was at uh, a forward P.E. of 9.9. .9. I, I can't remember when that has happened. And you look at even Facebook is at 15, which is kind of like at the average of the forward PEs. Uh, even Google is at 21, which is just a little bit above. Then you look at Disney, uh, 14, again, uh, undervalued, one of the great brands. Uh, you got Verizon at 11. Uh, you got uh, Walmart. Uh, all these are, this is a great time to buy. Just to dive in quickly on one of those, on Apple, are, are you fearful at all that their recent issues are not so much something that may prove to be temporary, temporary China, uh, and something more structural, that the smartphone boom phase is over? No, I, I don't believe the smartphone uh, boom phase is over, and I'll tell you why. Um, I think this year is going to be a little bit uh, uh, tough for them, uh, 2019. Why would anyone spend a lot of money for an iPhone right before 5G is, is being rolled out into the United States? And I've been to South Korea where they have 5G. It is a breakthrough. It is unbelievable. There are apps and services that we can't even imagine here in the United States because we don't have 5G. It's going to take apps that we use every day and transform them once we have 5G. It's not just about super fast streaming. Uh, it's not coming in until, you know, middle of this year. Apple will probably uh, put its first 5G phone in at the end of the year. So 2020 and 2021, think about this. Everybody who has an iPhone in the world is going to have to get a new one because nobody's not going to want to have this 5G technology. So looking for catalysts, broadly speaking, Rick, I mean, we did get the services number, hit a five-month low, which you brought us earlier. It's a busy week. We get minutes. Powell speaks again on Wednesday. CPI data. What sort of signals are you getting right now on the economy front? Well, I think I was impressed today with the U-turn in rates. Now, it wasn't large, but we did see some nice reversals. We're back over 2.5% in twos, threes, and fives. And with respect to 30-year bonds, the longest maturity, it's about ready to test 3%. So we're moving higher on the high yields of the day. I also think 78 billion in supply with threes, tens, and thirties, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, is going to be very important to monitor, especially after yields have dropped so dramatically since about the second week in October. Uh, as for catalysts, I think there's definitely more of a calm in the markets. It's evidenced by a lot less flight to safety buying than the dollar index. The dollar index looks to be, if it stays about where it is, to have its lowest close since about mid-October.